In today's video, I'm going to share with you the truth about Dave Ramsey. Hi there, welcome to another episode of The Power of Zero. I'm best-selling author David McKnight. Today we're going to be discussing two pillars of the beliefs that figure prominently in Dave Ramsey's financial worldview. For starters, I think I should say there are a lot of things I like about Dave Ramsey. I like his emphasis on paying off high interest credit card debt. If Dave Ramsey's main target audience followed his counsel in this regard, the country would be in a much healthier place from a financial perspective. But this of course begs the question, who is Dave Ramsey's target audience? It's the person who's making $50,000 per year, but spending 60,000. It's lower to middle America who's struggling to pay their bills. So he's dispensing one size fits all financial planning advice in an attempt to appeal to the masses. And along the way, he makes forays into basic financial planning concepts that run afoul of power of zero principles. In other words, Dave Ramsey's audience is not the power of zero audience. Power of Zero adherents have generally done a good job of saving money in their taxable and tax deferred buckets and are simply trying to figure out how to distribute their retirement savings in the most tax efficient way possible. They're simply trying to determine how to shield their hard earned retirement savings from the impact of higher taxes. We call that distribution planning. So what is the first Dave Ramsey principle that runs afoul of power of zero thinking. Well, for starters, he would rather you plow money into your tax deferred bucket with all of its attendant dangers and risks than even think about contributing to an LIRP. Let me lay a little groundwork to help clarify what I mean. Consider what Dave Ramsey had to say about tax deferred investing versus tax free investing. Quote, if your employer matches your contributions to your 401k, 403b, TSP, then invest up to the match. Next, fully fund a Roth IRA for you and your spouse if married. If that still doesn't total 15% of your income, come back to the 401k, 403b, or TSP. All right, let's break this down. Dave Ramsey recommends contributing to your 401k up to the match. So far, so good. Then your Roth IRAs, love it. And if you still have money left over, go back to the 401k again, contributing above and beyond the match. So Dave Ramsey clearly hasn't read The Power of Zero. There's no mention whatsoever of the implications of having too much money in your tax deferred bucket in a rising tax rate environment or the resulting impact on social security taxation. He doesn't talk about how you could spend down all your other assets to compensate for that hole in your social security. He also doesn't mention that the combination of rising tax rates and social security taxation could force you to run out of money 10 to 12 years faster than those who are in the 0% tax bracket in retirement. In other words, instead of recommending that you make contributions to the LIRP in an effort to enjoy the benefits of getting to the 0% tax bracket in retirement after having contributed to all of those other tax-free investments, he forces you back into tax deferred investments with all of the unintended consequences that go along with it. Dave Ramsey doesn't seem to understand or appreciate the role that a properly structured LIRP can play in helping you get into the 0% tax bracket in retirement. In short, financial gurus like Dave Ramsey often find themselves on the outside of the tax-free paradigm looking in, trying to interpret what they're seeing through the lens of their tax deferred worldview. And while their intentions are often noble, their recommendations, if accepted at face value, can lead to a cascade of financial consequences, many of which may prevent you from ever reaching the 0% tax bracket. All right, let's take a look at the second Dave Ramsey principle that veers dangerously into fiscally irresponsible territory. Dave Ramsey doesn't understand how the fees in the LIRP are structured. He fixates on what the LIRP's fees are in the first few years and extrapolates those fees out over the life of the program. By fixating on the fees of the LIRP in the first few years without considering the broader picture, he perpetuates the myth that LIRPs are too expensive. Take a look at the percentage of your first year premium that goes to fees, he exclaims. 
But this betrays a basic misunderstanding on how fees within an LIRP are structured. This is what we know about the LIRP. Their fees are higher in the early years, much lower in the later years, but when you average them out over the life of the program, it's gonna cost you between one and one and a half percent per year. In fact, the longer you keep the LIRP, the lower your average annual expenses. By the end of your life, the cumulative fees can actually be much lower than the cumulative fees in the mutual funds that Dave Ramsey frequently recommends. It's time for the Power Zero question of the day. Which Dave Ramsey principles have you had a hard time swallowing? Feel free to put your answers in the comment section below. Dave Ramsey is so fixated on the fees in the LIRP in the first few years that he fails to see the forest for the trees. He fails to recognize that the longer you hold your LIRP, the greater the internal rate of return. In fact, some people will get to the point in their policy when their fees start falling through the floor, then they'll listen to a Dave Ramsey podcast or read one of his books where he's ranting about the LIRP's high fees and then they'll drop their policy. And just when the LIRP was starting to build a head of steam, just when the internal expenses of the LIRP start falling precipitously, they succumb to Dave Ramsey's mischaracterization of the LIRP's fees. They drop their policy, lose their death benefit, and incur unwanted surrender fees along the way. And in the meantime, they continue to slam money into their 401k or other tax deferred vehicles hand over fist, exposing themselves to massive tax rate risk and ultimately putting themselves in a position where their cumulative fees will be much greater than what they ever would have been in their LIRP. You see, the LIRP is designed to work like a marriage. It only really works if you keep it until death do you part. And just like a good marriage, the longer you keep it, the better it gets. No one gets married thinking it's a five-year proposition. You get married because you plan on staying married for the rest of your life. The same should hold true with the LIRP. And for precisely that reason, you shouldn't fixate on the fees in your LIRP in the first year, first three years, or even the first five years. You should look at the fees over the life of the program and compare them to the fees you might have paid had you invested your money in some other alternative. So. Given the errant Dave Ramsey principles we've discussed here today, how should you approach retirement planning in a rising tax rate environment? Well, as I've said frequently in these videos and on my podcasts, in a rising tax rate environment, there is a mathematically perfect amount of money to have in your taxable and tax deferred buckets. In your taxable bucket, you want to have six months worth of basic living expenses. And in your tax deferred bucket, you want to have a balance low enough so that your RMDs at age 72 are equal to or less than your standard deduction in retirement and low enough that it doesn't cause social security taxation. Ultimately, you wanna have between four and six different streams of tax-free income, none of which show up on the IRS's radar, but all of which contribute to you being in the 0% tax bracket. That might include Roth IRAs, Roth 401ks, Roth conversions, RMDs up to your standard deduction, uh, the LIRP, and if you can keep your provisional income low enough, then your social security will also be tax-free. We wanna take advantage of all of the unique attributes that each of those tax-free streams of income has to offer. We wanna take advantage of every nook and cranny in the IRS tax code. And why do I make such a big deal about being in the 0% tax bracket? Well, if tax rates double, like a lot of experts are predicting, then two times zero is still zero. If you need some help navigating these types of strategies, head on over to davidmcknight.com and opt in for a complimentary strategy session. I'm happy to give you a hand. Uh, don't forget to click like, subscribe, and the bell so you never miss a video. And feel free to make comments or ask questions in the comments section below. This is David McKnight. I look forward to seeing you on the next video.